Uh, so Michelle Bird, uh, Executive Director of IFP, the Independent Feature Project. Um, thank you for joining us here at WKCR. Thanks for having me. Um, so just for our listeners who might not be so familiar with IFP and with the work that you do, um, there's a whole ton of projects that you actually are currently working on. Um, you want to just uh, run down the list and give me a little brief synopsis about each of the things that you do for the community? Sure. IFP has been around almost 30 years, and the we work with independent filmmakers. So our ultimate goal is to see the development, production, um, exhibition of independent films. So we're always looking to build audiences for independent work. And the uh, four basic programs. We publish a magazine called Filmmaker Magazine. You can find it online at www.filmmakermagazine.com. Uh, actually, the editor is a graduate of Columbia. Awesome. Give a little shout out to Scott McCauley, the editor. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, in addition to publishing the magazine, we have uh, what we call our independent filmmaker labs, which are for films that are at the rough cut stage, so almost completed, but it's really a mentorship program for dramatic work and for documentaries that are at you know at the work in you know final kind of work in progress stage before they start submitting to film festivals. So it's really a, an intensive five-day program here in New York. It happens over the course of the summer where people come in. They're given one-on-one mentors. Um, we even give out a grant this year, a $50,000 grant, um, to help finish a work. Uh, it was a donation from an uh, individual, gave us an anonymous donation, so that went um, off to the filmmaker. So the Independent Filmmaker Labs. We have something called Independent Film Week, which happens in September. That's basically the founding program of the organization, and it's really a confluence of things. It's both a conference on filmmaking and kind of trends and what's coming ahead that people should be sort of thinking out of, thinking of. And it's also, um, there's a project forum, which really focuses on projects and development. So they're looking to meet potential financiers, sales agents, long lead stuff about festivals, but for the most part, the dramatic work is at the script stage. The documentary work is in some form of production. We take about 130 projects from across the country, and uh, over the course of you know the week, there's something like 2,000 individual meetings set up on behalf of those projects, so it's really intensive, meetings-driven kind of thing. Um, for anybody who becomes, an, and IFP is also a membership-based organization, Uh, So anybody who becomes a member of the organization, uh, which pretty much anybody can do, it's pretty low threshold in terms of cost, like $35 for just an interactive membership, you get access after the week of the conference to all of the streaming or download to your whatever your MP3 device is, all the conference kind of panel discussions. So for students in particular, it's kind of a cost-effective way if they're not able to get down downtown. And then the final, final program is the Gotham Awards, which is probably what we're going to talk a little bit about. Yeah, and um, there's also, um, I mean, as part of the week, I think, is, is the market, mm-hmm. right? Um, so, so we've just basically stopped calling it the market. Okay. And But that, yes, that is exactly what it is. Yeah, and there's really, you know, a lot of um, hustling and bustling, mm-hmm. business transactions happening there, and a lot mm-hmm. of um, financing going into uh, projects. Um, you know, seeing a lot of projects get made, which uh, brings us to uh, an interesting question because, you know, nowadays um, all these large studios have independent arms, mm-hmm. quote unquote, and uh, a lot of, you know, hedge funds were previously uh, investing in movies. So what do you qualify as an independent film nowadays? We really take a kind of broad view of there's sort of the um, maybe what's in the mainstream known as an independent film and then the kind of nuts and bolts reality of what's really an independent film. And, you know, I think that the majority of people who are taking advantage of IFP's programs, using their programs, they're really filmmakers who are um, working in much lower budgets, you know. So it could be that they're working in on the upper reaches. Maybe it's a $10 million film, you know, but it's most likely, you know, kind of in the $20, 30 40 50 $200,000 range. So it's a kind of, that's already a, a kind of wide expanse. Mm-hmm. Um for the purposes of the Gotham uh, Independent Film Awards, we define it by distribution. Okay. So we look at it as if it's re- if it's put out into the marketplace by one of the classics divisions of a studio, a Sony Classics, um, Fox Searchlight, and and frankly, there those are shrinking. There's mm-hmm. a bunch that have already gone away. Right. Warner the, Independent. Warner Independent's gone away. Um, Paramount Vantage, mm-hmm. you know, is kind of um, been disassembled to a large degree. New Line is a completely different yeah. company. 
Um, so we really look at it from the Gotham's perspective as more from exhibition, because um, you know if you th sort of think about at least in New York in the New York marketplace, it becomes kind of where would movies play? You know, so if they're self-distributed or they're from the classics divisions, they're probably going to play Sunshine Land, you know, Sunshine Landmark um, Chain. Um, maybe they're going to be at the Angelica. Maybe they'll be at a Cinema Village, Film Forum, you know, Lincoln Plaza. Uh, they're probably not opening up, you know, on 50,000 screens, sure. AMC chain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so let's let's talk a little bit about the awards. Uh, so they're going to be running uh, the 20th through the 6th, and you're going to have a big gala uh, red carpet event mm -hmm. uh, on the 2nd. Right. And where's that going to be this year? Uh, the Gotham Awards ceremony is at Tripiani Wall Street. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the kind of irony, I guess, if you will, it's not really irony. You know, those people who only know us for the Gotham Awards, it might look like the organization is kind of fancy and doing glamorous things, and there's Penelope Cruz and all these Sean Penn and fancy people on the red carpet. And the reality is if you show up at our office over on uh, 29th Street, you'll see, you know, VCRs and TVs <laughs> piled up high in the men's room. It, it looks very much like this radio station. The WKCR <laughs> studios right here. Yep. It looks exactly like it. <laughs> and the filmmakers, you know, who are taking advantage of our programs, they're not making movies, you know, these kind of star-studded, huge trailers, you know, they're not doing that kind of work. So it really does wind up being this celebration that um, presents in a very kind of glitzy, glamorous way. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is uh, a legitimate, you know, award ceremony mm -hmm. with uh, the oh, flashbulbs. Yeah, there's a host. There's a whole thing, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, and, uh, you know, from what I've been reading, it kind of, if you will, kicks off the awards season. Mm -hmm. That's what, I, that's what mm -hmm. I've been uh, hearing. Um, You've been told that by our publicist. <laughs> I, I have. I have I have indeed been told that by the publicist. Uh -huh. um, so, like, let's talk about uh, some of the projects that have sure. been nominated this year. Sure. Um, do you want to just uh, go down the Yeah, list? I mean, basically, you know, for m most award shows, well, one, I think the Gothams are pretty different mm -hmm. in, on a number of fronts in that it's an award show with only six competitive awards. Uh, and if you remove one of the categories, which a lot of people don't even qualify f for, which is called Best Film Not Playing at a Theater Near You, there's really only five. So, so five uh, kind of competitive awards. So it's Best Feature, Best Documentary, Breakthrough Actor, Breakthrough Director, and Ensemble Performance. And um, so that's already kind of different from you know, maybe a typical award show, no matter what kind of award show. They only have, you know, like six awards. is <laughs> yeah. not so, so normal. So we have, you know, this combination of tributes. Uh, the four tributes this year are to Penelope Cruz, Melvin Van Peebles, HBO's Sheila Nevins, uh, who runs the documentary division, and uh, Penelope, what did I not? Say, Gus Van Sant. Uh, so it's really kind of 10 categories of things. And we're, what's your question? I've never already forgotten it. Oh, I, I, I don't remember <laughs> it either. But um, no, you know, you, you, you Oh, about some it. of Just, the films. Yeah, about some, some of the films. films and nominations. Well, if we were to start with, and I actually did, and of course I forgot to bring it with me, uh, who are some of the Columbia graduates um, in the lineup? And what, somebody who's actually a Columbia graduate and has been through IFP's programs three times with her, her film is uh, Courtney Hunt, hmm. who directed Frozen River. Hmm. And so, you know, films like Frozen River, Ballast, and you mentioned already you had yeah. Lance Hammer here, the director, uh, Jonathan Demme, who seemingly every year has a film that's somehow in the Gotham <laughs> Awards um, lineup, whether it's documentary or uh in a, a narrative film like Rachel Getting Married, uh, Charlie Kaufman's film, mm -hmm. Synecdoche, New York. Uh, what else do we have? Man on Wire on the documentary side. Uh, Roman Polanski, which is a really terrific film for any of the film lovers out there. Uh, just a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, let's let's talk a bit um, about Ballast. Uh, as you mentioned, Lance Hammer was kind enough to join me in a previous episode. Um, and something very different this year, right? Mm -hmm. um, so he was, well, why don't you tell well, me? Well, Lance, you know, we, we've we been a fan of Lance's for a while, and Lance actually, you know, with Ballast, didn't come through any IFP programs. He's He is a filmmaker based in Los Angeles, and he, you know, I sent him a note. We, we did a couple things with Lance that, that I thought were pretty cool. We did it, we started a, um, you know, I read something, there's a, a website called IndieWire, and I read an article 
uh, about Lance and what Lance was doing, you know, and, and I saw Ballast, uh, I think, I don't know, a couple months before it came out. But anyway, you know, Ballast won an award at Sundance, and I was reading this article in IndieWire uh, where it's talking about Lance is going to be releasing his film on his own. And we got in touch with Lance and said, that's really cool, that's kind of interesting that you've chosen this route, and we're interested in helping you. And so we started this program. We, we've been talking about this program for a while, um, but we kind of kicked it off earlier because there was an opportunity to help Lance. Um, it was our first week in initiative. And the idea is to select films that we think are really strong, interesting films that we want to help them with their opening weekend box office. Because one of the things that's, you know, independent films for the most part nowadays don't really have a chance to find an audience. It's kind of like there's so many options for your time in terms of, you know, being an audience member that it's really important to kind of get out of the gate quickly and make as much noise as you possibly can. And Lance had a number of champions behind him, and we did this program, and we bought pre-bought a screening at Film Forum and gave the you know, contributed the box office. Hmm. So we bought, we pre-bought a show on a, I think it was like a Thursday night or something. So going into his, before the film even opened, he already had a sold out screening. Oh. So so the idea for us is really to kind of try and build, you know, upon that program. Um, but Lance is a cool guy and he's, you know, I think he, he kind of, you know, bit off a lot in trying to, you know, in, in releasing the film on his own. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there was a very interesting Times article about, just about that. Um, and he's nominated for he's four? nominated for four awards. So right. Lance, so I sent Lance because you know, kind of geeky fans of Lance's. I sent Lance a note after we did our our press release on all the nominees. I sent Lance this note and I just said, you know, I know you've never been to the Gotham Awards. Just FYI, I want you to know because it wasn't in the release, but you should just know personally that you're the first person who's ever received four nominations um, for the Gothams <laughs> and across like every possible category. Wow. So just a little kudos to you, Lance. Yeah. And he's very funny. He, he gave me, he paid me this very nice compliment. He said, you know, it, it's so funny because I'm not from New York. I'm not a New Yorker. And I've just had this very warm embrace by the New York community about yeah. this film. Um, and I think it's maybe because it's in a weird way, Lance, had the film sensibility feels very much kind of uh, East Coast, mm -hmm. but yeah. he's not an East Coast guy. <laughs> yeah, in, in terms of that it's it's just so different from the stuff that's being. It's a little bit more European yes. in terms of sensibility, non-stars, the t the pacing, mm -hmm. um, subject matter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, who is on the jury that actually selects these? Well, films? it's two tiers. So uh -huh. we do. Um, IFP is not involved in any selection okay. at all, uh -huh. uh, and we feel really strongly that that this needs to be a community involvement. So to select the nominees, we have, and we had something like uh, 150, 160 films submitted for consideration across all the categories. And we have critics, journalists, film festival programmers, um, people who are used to seeing a lot of work and seeing work early. Um, come up with the selections. And I think there's 22 total films or something like that across all the categories. The final jurors we don't actually announce mm. until day of the Gotham Awards cool. to protect their identities yeah. um, so that they don't get, so you can't lobby somebody sure. for this award. <laughs> and not only do we not, do we not tell you know, kind of publicly who's on the jury. We don't tell the jury who's on the jury with them Very until they actually meet. And they're like, oh my God, you're doing, you know, or yeah. they're on the phone and they're like, oh my God, hey. <laughs> you know, so they don't know. So it's this kind of like lockdown secret um, that we pride ourselves on. But we'll announce uh, the day of the, the Gothams, who they all are. But they're all people who make films. So directors, producers, casting directors, editors, composers, um, people who actually are involved in the process of making movies. Very cool, very cool. Um, let's talk a little bit about this film not playing at mm -hmm. the theater near you. Mm -hmm. uh, how did it get started? Uh, who are some of the partners that, mm -hmm. that you're working with? Um, go ahead. Best Film Not Playing at a Theater Near You was uh, an idea that we came up with because in thinking about the Gothams, you know, and, and a sort of award shows, and knowing that we were going to have a very limited number of um, competitive awards, we felt it was really important to clearly designate one of those awards exclusively to a film that was not released, and that we wanted to use this kind of very visible platform of media attention to shine a spotlight on a film that we thought was really worthy, um, that had been on the festival circuit over the course of the year. 
So it's it's kind of ironic, you know, because the whole I, the whole notion of best film not playing at a theater near you it's supposed to be a little cute, in terms of the title, but you know, it's this idea that you can't see it, and that we're trying to get you to be able to see it. So on the one hand, you want to be one of the nominees, and then the moment you're a nominee, you want to quickly <laughs> lose that moniker because sure. we want people to see the film. Sure. So our partner on it, uh, as I mentioned, we publish a magazine called Filmmaker Magazine. So it's the editors of Filmmaker Magazine, and Josh Siegel, who's one of the programmers over, one of the curators over at um, the Museum of Modern Art, in the film department. So they all convene and they pick the nominees and collectively they select who the recipient will be. And the recipient this year for the first time is gonna get some cash. They'll get uh, $15,000, which is coming from two places. It's coming from Artist Public Domain, which is a foundation, and it's coming from DR Reef and Associates, which is uh, production, ins- they do insurance for films. Hmm. And what, what does that mean, uh, a film that's not released? You know, with. Uh, distribution model changing every single day. Right. Um, wh- how do you define that? I mean, we basically look at it as a film that has not had a kind of theatrical run. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, a film like After School uh, premiered at the Cannes Film Festival. It was in the New York Film Festival. It's not been acquired yet mm-hmm. for distribution. It's not had a run where you could go and see it over an, you know, a period of a week or whatever at a, at a cinema. Uh, Meadowlark, I don't remember which festival it premiered in. It was in Outfest. Um, it was in New Fest. It's been in a number of different, particularly gay and lesbian film festivals. The New Year Parade won the Grand Jury Prize at Slam Dance last January. It won, I think, an award at uh, Gen Art. And it's played at a bunch of different um, festivals. Cita Sing the, Sings the Blues premiered at Berlin. Uh, Wellness, I believe, premiered in Rotterdam, played at the South by Southwest Film Festival. So so it's really that these films have been on the festival circuit, but they've not, it's not like you'd open up your local newspaper and be able to go and see them because they're not playing. Sure. Um, Do you think that, you know, uh, with the internet Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, films like Ballast uh, trying to do their own distribution Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, straight to DVD and stuff like that, do you think you're going to see... Um, a lot of films choosing to go that non-released path or people still always want to get that I think that there's a lot deal. of opportunity, quite frankly, and I think that a filmmaker who is... Um, a- a- any filmmaker that's really... I mean, it's, it takes so much to make a movie, and it just seems to me that uh, as much control as you want to have in sort of your destiny in making your film, an independent film you should really think about from the outset that you might want that same kind of level of creativity and control and how you're going to reach audiences. And I think that there are going to be filmmakers who think start thinking a little bit more aggressively about how can I leverage that opportunity of going straight from a high profile maybe film festival straight into some kind of uh, limited release, maybe there's something that's done with, whether it's an Amazon, you know, that there was just an announcement the other day about a partnership they're doing, or it's an iTunes, or I just saw an interesting model um, from Gigantic Digital. You know, there's a bunch of companies that are doing kind of interesting things, and I think you are going to see some filmmakers start to get a little bit more ambitious in terms of the leveraging from their festival Mm -hmm. into being able to see the film. Because the reality is there aren't that many places that are gonna be picking up films for theatrical distribution. You know, and the sort of quicker that filmmakers start to really grasp that, there might be more interesting options for them to kind of work off of the momentum that they're already, you know, seeing from festivals. Yeah, there was a a very interesting uh, NPR story a, a little while back about that so few films are mm-hmm. actually being picked up mm-hmm. um, that uh, you know filmmakers are forced to find these right. these other options for distribution. I mean, what I think is sort of too bad is a lot of filmmakers wait. Uh-huh. They're waiting. I don't quite understand what the hell they're waiting for, but they're waiting. Yeah. You know, and they're waiting like an, a year. Some of them are waiting longer, and it, you know, we're in a you know kind of we have this. You know, un- you know, we, we we can't be satiated somehow in our desire to just sort of see stuff, see new things, things that are fresh, new, whatever. And it's kind of like if you're two years out, you know, after you've kind of made your little noise somewhere, it starts to feel old. 
So it's sort of like you want to kind of allow people to be able to see your work as quickly as you can while you've got kind of heat on it. Mm-hmm. And I think that is going to become an interesting opportunity for certain filmmakers. And I think you're going to start seeing maybe festivals get a little bit more aggressive in terms of how they create maybe some partnerships with some of these outlets. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's uh, go back to uh, the tributes Mm -hmm. and um, some of the partners. Mm -hmm. Um, So I know you're working with BAM. We work with BAM. Mm -hmm. We love working with BAM. And this year we're only doing one screening um, at BAM. So basically between November 20th and December 6th, uh, there will be 10 films and I think two or three panel discussions uh, with people who are either nominees or tribute people for the Gothams. And we have a ton of people kind of coming out. And at BAM, we're doing a screening of Volver, uh, Pedro Almodovar's film, that will be on December 1st. So we work with BAM. We're working with MoMA on the series, Best Film Not Playing at a Theater Near You. We're also doing a screening of, that we're really excited about, we're doing a screening of Milk, and Milk opens, I think, right before Thanksgiving, right around Thanksgiving. So we're screening it, uh, doing the special screening at MoMA, but Gus Van Zant will be there. There may even be a surprise actor from mm-hmm. the film stopping mm-hmm. by with him. But Gus will introduce it and do a Q&A after, which I think will be really pretty amazing. Very cool. um, and that's going to be at MoMA. And then we're also doing uh, Melvin Van Peebles' first film, Story of a Three-Day Pass, La Permission, uh, which is in French, mostly in English. Uh, and his latest film, which is wild. <laughs> and that's going to be at MoMA. And we're doing two panel discussions at the Directors Guild Theater. Um, the DGA has been a, a long partner of ours as well. And over the Thanksgiving weekend, so the, uh, the 30th of November and December 1st, we're doing the, uh, the nominees, all the nominees for the Breakthrough Director Award and all of the nominees for the um, Breakthrough Actor award in a kind of conversation, moderated conversation, clips from their films, which will be pretty cool. Cool. Um, let's talk a little bit about the labs. Um, oh, there's one thing I forgot to oh, mention. Shoot. On the on the tributes, yes. we're doing a screening. We're also showing some work uh, at Sheila Nevins. So Taxi Cab Confessions, which is a series on HBO, uh, which is now in New- shooting in New York. So it's Taxi Cab Confessions, New York. And conversation with Sheila and Peter Bart, who's the editor-in-chief of Variety, and we're showing the Roman Polanski film uh, after. So there's a kind of Sheila program at the, after the Gothams on December 4th. Mm-hmm. Very cool, very cool. Um, I was, I was going to ask about the labs. Mm-hmm. Um, how does, you know, obviously uh, one becomes a member of IFP, that's the first way to get involved. Sure. And then what are some of the programs that are offered to an independent filmmaker through the ra- through the labs and has one get involved? Uh, for just for your basic membership, you know, that's kind of tiered. It's really like two tiers. There's mm-hmm. this kind of interactive, which essentially doesn't give you access to IFP programs, meaning to come to screenings and that sort of thing. And then there's the individual membership, which is like $100. And to, to submit a project for consideration of any of, whether it's our project forum, which used to be called The Market, um, of Independent Film Week or for the labs, you need to be, be a member of the IFP. Mm-hmm. So members, depending on what kind you are, you get a subscription to the magazine, you get to come to our Industry Connect, which is a monthly series of workshops on festival strategies, casting, different things related to production, development, post-production, exhibition. Uh, you get to come to screenings. We do a lot of preview screenings, so we work with a lot of different distributors on that kind of stuff. Uh, discounts on things around town. Usually it's production insurance, health insurance. Um, might be some equipment, might be a movie theater, that kind of thing. Um, for the labs, I mean, for the, for the labs and the project form, it's really we have a, a program department, and they sort of select. They really are, are looking at work that they feel with the labs in particular, um, if your film, if you and your, uh, if the director and the producers, and maybe you're, if you're lucky enough to have an editor or a post supervisor or a composer, you know, sometimes when you're making your first film, they're really for first time filmmakers. And when you're making your first film, a lot of times you can get stuck, you know. And so the lab is really designed to help people who are trying to um, 
figure out some some viable solutions to problems in the in their work. So if it's perfect, that's a film that doesn't really need the lab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so the lab is really designed to kind of help people kind of who might be at a you know at a juncture where they kind of could use some direction well, and outside a kickstart, some outside perspective. Maybe there's some squabbling, differences mm-hmm. of opinions. You mm-hmm. never know. <laughs> sure. Um, now uh, last year. The awards were at Steiner Studios. Yes. Right. Yes. And now they're not. They're not. That's um, right. Did that like not work out? Like what happened there? No, Steiner Studios was great, and mm-hmm. I love Doug Steiner. He's he's a good guy. Um, we had been at Chelsea Piers mm-hmm. at uh, Pier sixty for probably eleven years. We were one of the first events booked into Pier sixty when the whole Chelsea Piers complex opened, and we'd actually signed our contract before they even opened. So we kind of went on faith that it was going to be ready. <laughs> but um, that's how you get your good, you know, sort of not-for-profit deal. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't want to leave. But frankly, we the event uh, wound up getting just too large. And, you know, a combination of, um, you know, the people who own Jim Kirsch, who one of the owners of Abigail Kirsch, which is the catering company at uh, Pier 60, is a partner uh, in the catering business at Steiner Studios. So he was kind of helpful in us reimagining how to move the like move the event to a larger venue and create sort of enough buzz that would make it a different story. And we gave, did a tribute last year to the mayor. So the fact that um, we took this award show and you never really think of a, events in New York City as happening somehow off the island of Manhattan. So the whole idea of doing a big event in Brooklyn was, you know, helpful for us in terms of being of interest to the mayor and mm-hmm. sort of his all borough message. Sure. So, so you know, and what's interesting is that Steiner Studios is, is booming with business now. So it was kind of a nice thing for them. It was a nice thing for us. They're totally busy and packed. And Doug Steiner bought some tickets to this year. So, cool. <laughs> no, so we're happy to be at Cipriani. Um, they've been really great to work with so far. And we're looking to make that our new home. Cool. Very cool. And, like, um, so who are... Some of the big names. That the we're big expecting. names coming. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the probably the, you know, it's interesting. I'm, I'll be curious to see how much, just how insane the press is about Penelope Cruz. Mm. I mean, that's uh, she's kind of a, a a big deal. Yeah. And she's a big deal on the on the carpet. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a bunch of people that you know we think are pretty cool that are coming. Who've been a few of them have been you know a few times. Um, and they, you know, there's kind of these rock star guys coming. Uh, so Sean Penn, Ben Kingsley, um, Dennis Hopper. I mean, these are sort of like iconic yeah. people. Um, Patricia Clarkson. I'm really excited. Deborah Winger's coming. I think she's great. And Rachel getting married. Um, who else is coming? Um, yeah, it was very funny. We had a meeting with Asif Manvi, who's the host this year who's a correspondent on The Daily Show mm-hmm. and we were kind of giving him a little rundown and we we're telling him he was coming and we just kind of looked at him and we said and Ben Kingsley's coming we just kind of looked at him like is he going to have a comment he's like yes Gandhi <laughs> <laughs> so we are expecting some uh, Gandhi references nice um, who else is coming I don't know just about I mean a whole slew of the A-listers. nominees yeah. yeah yeah and and are they mostly uh, people who are living in New York or a lot of people no come a lot in of people well? come in yeah. so um, and they come in you know from different all far-flung places so I know Penelope Cruz is on the set of nine so they're you know she's flying in from that Ben Kingsley is presenting to her he's coming in from London shooting some big huge studio movie mm-hmm. uh, I think Dennis Hopper's in town because I'm not actually sure why he's in town, but I know he's um, doing promotional stuff for Crash, the TV series. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Some people, I don't know. I, I don't know where they're all coming from. Yeah. But Gus they're... obviously doesn't live here. Gus Van Sant doesn't live here. Um, some of it, you know, Melvin Van Peebles lives here. Sheila Evans lives here. Yeah. Yeah. So a, l- a little bit of the local, a little bit of the all over the place. Yeah. And uh, it's is it, be, is it being covered on TV again this year? No. We no. decided that it was that it was uh, more interesting that unless it was really going to be like some. It's interesting because the th- again the thing about the awards is that and is that people feel pretty comfortable. Mm-hmm. It's kind of loose. If mm-hmm. It's you know like nine hundred people in the in the audience, 
And a lot of people come year after year after year, and so it has a feeling of the familiar. It's kind of like the place where the whole indie community kind of converges. Mm -hmm. And no, so we sort of decided that it was never designed to be a TV show. Yeah. And that while we're, you know, we, we're still open to, you know, it becoming a TV program, that we didn't want to change it mm -hmm. um, substantially in a way to make it more of a TV show and where the audience feels like um, filler yeah. for a TV show. Sure. So, no, we decided we had been on NYC, with, working with NYC TV for probably the past three years, I think. And we kind of ultimately decided this year we're going to film you know, film bits of it ourselves, put it up on the, you know, on the internet. We've got an editor who's shooting different things, creating different kinds of montage pieces. He's going to send out virally mm -hmm. in advance. So we're, so we're, we feel like, you know, we'd rather just put it on the internet ourselves in different kinds of ways and make sure that more people could see it. Very, very cool. So uh, if people either want to check out the awards show, if they want to learn about more IFP, where can they go to check that out? Yeah, you can go to our website, IFP, um, www.ifp.org. Uh -huh. And there's links to the Gotham's, and there are you can go straight to the Gotham site. There'll be a Twitter. I'm obsessed personally with Twitter. <laughs> so there, like, at like midnight the other night, I sent my you know Twitter account. You're like I'm the only friend on it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're actually going to have we're like, sort of lining up some interesting actors and directors to kind of shoot photos and do Twitter tw tweets, whatever the hell you call it. Uh, <laughs> What do you call it? Do I you don't know? know. No, you don't do it. I don't. I don't do. It. I just got an account. I haven't started using it yet. You gotta start putting <laughs> stuff up. All right. I'm gonna tell. I, as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna say, "Check me out." I'm gonna be on. <laughs> listen to my my program. Listen yep. to the interview. Um, well, uh, that's actually all the time we have left. Um, but Michelle Bird, Executive Director, IFP, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much. And uh, I'll be looking out for that Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks.